Down there, our parents built a city. A city without any history. No fire, no plague, no revolution. Down there would be no crime, no slums. With open parks, tree-lined avenues, and friendly people. A good place to bring up kids. A cloud, a tree, a field, a cow. A cloud, a tree, a field, cow. A flower, a thing, a crowd. It's not straight, you know. What? This thing. Okay. It's like that. It doesn't have to be. Oh, well, just take that. My name is Douglas. I do live here, but I came to the city much later. I came as a filmmaker to find the child in the car and ask where all his hopes and dreams met. Our grandparents invented the 60s, their children survived the 70s knuckle down throughout the 80s and 90s. They had all the fun, took part in the protests, fought and fucked the establishment, branded the future. After all that fighting and fucking, they bought the bubble of the Milton Keynes advert and brought us here. Jackie was brought here in 84, she married at 17, divorced at 19. Now she's a single mum. So, I mean, how did you sort of feel at uh, age four, being completely uprooted from your home? Um, I don't remember a whole lot about it, to be honest. I mean, I remember coming into this new house and whatever. I mean, my mum since told me that I wasn't too happy for a while. I had nightmares and things like that because I was petrified of moving again. But um, that's about as much as I can remember. They were good days, yeah. When I was with my family and my sister and everyone. <laughs> but yeah. Trickster was in the back of the Fiesta too. He was one of the first black kids to come here. Originally moved from London. Hello, Wendy and Reppin. <laughs> yeah, man, it's about London. Yeah, my mum took me out of London and it's get me away from things there. She didn't want me going the wrong way, so she brought me to this place. No way you can go really is a safe haven, is it? No way you can. There's no. There's no place ever that's ever going to be 100 percent perfect. No crying where your like where your kids grow up to like enjoy going to school. Goes, you know what I mean? Like that's never going to happen. It's never going to happen, boy. That's what they call it, lower class. We're like, we're the bottom of the chain, you <laughs> see what I'm saying? I don't see myself as lower class though, I'm higher class, you get me? Higher class, boy. <laughs> Jokes. So we start off with our famous punch, which is like Archer's vodka, and that Five Alive juice, like mixed all together. Go through that, and then we go over to like the Stella when we go out, God knows how much. I first met Sean in the street when he was bored, obnoxious, and half pissed. Later, he told me he just wanted to leave. I'm not staying in the UK, there's no point. It's just running down to the ground, to be honest with you. It's not, it's not the greatest place to be anyway. Like Britain, I mean, it's cold, it's wet, there's nothing that really wants to appeal you here. I mean, the monarch is just cack. Government's cack, but just get used to it, you is the lead singer of Gravel Trap. I met him after a gig. Well, I mean, it, it depends whether you're looking at the whole development of our country in commercialism or culture. I mean, a city like this will not thrive in any, any kind of culture that, that people are interested in. It's not the majority. 
and they do bill for the vast majority and that's great if you are one of them people but if you're into any kind of alternative music or alternative fashion culture then you'll find yourself moving away but we can't move away now we have to look closer closer at this city of firsts where the babies have had babies i was on the council housing list and um yeah it was basically got told by them sort of best thing you can do is sort of get them to kick you out so you've got nowhere to go, have a few more children and give it work. <laughs> Why didn't you? Because I am a very proud person and it took a whole lot of um, kicking up the backside to get me to claim the working family tax credit in the first place. Because <laughs> I like to, I was raised, you make your own way, you make your own money, you don't sort of, unless you absolutely have to, <laughs> you don't sort of take anything else. You work for what I chose to have my son and everything, so it's a case of make your own way. <laughs> Somehow they need us to be all the same to fit in the boxes. They didn't plan for estates full of solo mums and single men. Conflicting lifestyles and opinions weren't part of the grand design. <laughs> no, shouldn't have kids until you're at least 40. Live life. Totally, totally. People having kids young is pathetic. It's foolish. And yeah, sometimes it happens, but there's no need for it. So that, I know it's quite biased view to have on like, people being young and having kids, but it's, they're stopping their life and they're not going to be able to enjoy life and have their own fun and know. So when their kids come home and they smell that they've been smoking like weed or they've been taking drugs and stuff, they're not going to have any concept on why they're doing it and what it's all about because they were a child when they had that child. I disagree with that. I wouldn't change the fact that I had him. He wouldn't be who he is if I'd have had him later. I would have missed out on a great joy. Um, I think that you can be just as good a mother at a young age as you can be at an older age, the same way as you can be a bad mother at a young age as you can at an older age. I think it depends on the individual. I was married at the time that I had my son. Um, he was planned. We um, sort of felt a great loss after I lost the baby and wanted to fill that void. Um, and I've got an incredibly well-adjusted, well-behaved little boy. But we're petrified our babies will be captured by marauding murderers and preying paedophiles in our urban utopia. Let's thank the tabloids for saving our souls. That's the school. This is the school, yeah. It's brand new. I mean, outside of school, he's going to be very lucky if he has any freedom. Just for the simple reason, I'd prefer, obviously, to a certain degree, you have to let them go at some point, but I prefer him to hate me and think that I made him stay at home rather than put him at risk. Do you not think this is just press panic? Not considering things that have happened, um, not in Milton Keynes specifically, but um, you've had all the um, machete massacres and the gunmen coming into schools and things like that. Like you've had the ones in, um, is it Dunblane? I can't remember. Oh, Jesus Christ. Excuse me, can I ask you what you're doing filming at a school? Because you haven't asked permission. Shadows on fresh concrete are so sharply defined that all we fear is our own fucking shadows. My way of life is only just becoming, you know, part of society now. Where it wasn't like when I was 15, it was very difficult to be able to, you know, be, be myself around people. And for people to be able to, and I think Britain or well, Britain, yeah, as itself, has come a long way, like, in nine years, from being a, like, quite homophobic, like, country, to being quite accepting. Yeah, you still got one or two, but then you get that over it, don't you? There's always someone that's got a problem with someone, so... Or something that someone's doing. I mean, my issue is, like, single mums and that. I don't approve of them. But some people don't approve of homosexuals, so... Sean told his mum he was gay at 15. He had his first sexual experience at 15. He left home at 15. He hasn't spoken to his mum since he was 15. It's all good. No, but immigrants and that, like refugees and things, sent back to their own country or done, made to do like military service. They should all be deported. I don't care. 
put in a shop, prove their respect for the country before they live in the country. That's my view. God, so Nazi, I know. <laughs> oh my God, Hitler's beliefs. <laughs> I can't remember what paper it was in, but I know it was in somewhere. But they spent so much money on asylum seekers that they haven't got, there it is. Yeah, it is just milk keys, guessing. Come on, Sean. This is Daily Mail, 1934. Hurrah for the black shirts. You tell us, how many gays died in the concentration camps? If Hitler came to power now, the local camps could easily be the suburbs of Milton Keynes, Fishermead, Netherfield and Conibra. Crammed full of Irish, blacks, Jews, single mums, refugees, addicts, homosexuals, disabled, commies, trade unionists, northerners. But this isn't fascism. This was a well-intentioned attempt to clear England, once and for all, of the scourge of poverty, wasn't it? Replacing inner-city battery chickens with a modern free-range chicken farm but we're still fed on shit. This place, it really is like it's been designed and built on SimCity with, you know, the average, Mr. Average character in mind who likes to drink at places like Hogshead behind us or TJ Fridays. And, and really not a very uncultured yob town existence. I like to find the little bars where people are, are doing their own thing and expressing some actual emotion in music. I like to go, drinking fits around that for me, whereas all here, it's all about the drinking. Uh, the music is secondary, it's very loud in your face, you can't really be expected to really talk over the top of it, and it's, you know, it's all been playlisted from above, it's all been dictated from above. If you're the kind of person that's not really out for culture, you're just out for getting drunk, then Milton Keynes is great. And there's 101 bars where you can go and get drunk and listen to mindless music, but for me personally, that kind of music represents almost the bang of the Nazi drum to keep everyone marching in line. The state wants to keep us sober for Monday morning, but McPuke wants to pour cheap lager down our gullets. I'd call this a contradiction, if I wasn't slaughtered. But some of us are looking up at the stars, even if it is from the gutter outside Weatherspoons. See that side, they don't see the two, two different people inside. I mean, everyone, everyone's like, oh no, I'm not the same, I'm not different at work to what I am like normally, but everyone is. How do I earn money? Well, by working, hard labour. I don't like it, but you still have to do it. But well, right now, it's like some Tesco print place, like, it's like a little, I don't know, man, just maybe raise a little money for Christmas, learn it for my little bros and that. But I don't really like working, I don't like it. Check this, I've been working there three weeks, yeah? First week, here, yeah? I get paid, what, for 42 hours, yeah? They must have owed me another 12 hours or so. They never paid me, yeah? Really and truthfully, if that happened on road, yeah, someone owed me, like, money, I can go and do something for me to get back my money, innit? But when it's work, you can't do nothing, innit? You just have to sit there and tolerate it. I've worked in Dame Chrysler, doing um, some very monotonous admin work. Um, I'm now currently working at the Open University in the library. I've started off in shop work, gone to the factory work, gone to the office work, and I've found similar kinds of attitudes in the sense that a lot of the office jobs I'm working in, you're, you're basically finding the same people who would be working in the factories just dressed up in suits. I think definitely people get brainwashed into believing that that's all there is. And when you start thinking like that, you start finding comfort in the, the little perks of dressing up in a suit, and you start to feel as though, yeah, I'm a valued member of this company. Are you ever worried one of your family will come in? Yeah, my mum come in the other day and totally blanked me, so... You get used to it. Did you have to serve her? Yeah, yeah, it's all good though. 
because it just proves that I'm a stronger person than what she is because I was able to go up, confront her, smile, get on with it, do my job, and she wasn't able to even look at me. So it just proves that I've moved on and that I've grown up and that I was able to do my job. It doesn't matter who it is and, you know, who, who they are, no matter what they do, I still managed to push myself through it. Yeah, it hurt and, yeah, it was hard and, yeah, I got upset about it, but they're just another check. You know, it's just another tip at the end of the day. It doesn't really matter. Me personally, I couldn't get it without my mum. And without my mum, yeah, they raised me here yeah, through this sick world, you know what I mean? Because if you're a foreigner coming into this country, there's racism everywhere. Everywhere you go, there's racism, innit? For, for, for a black woman, yeah, to go through that and, ra and, and ra like, raise me to be the way I am, yeah, I've got a lot of respect for my mum. A lot of respect for my mum. You get me? She's, she, she's, she's done... She's my everything. Anyone should know that your mum is your everything. Your mum brings you into this world. Really, this country really should be run by a woman. I believe that, no, serious, I really believe this country should be run by a woman. The world should be run by women. Because men, yeah, we're too war-ridden, we're too... We don't think about things like that, you know what I mean? It's the women who think about their kids. Women, yeah, they yeah. But the evil as well, though. <laughs> it's still a little deceitful things, but... Of course, Mummy's trying to do this with a great nose gash in her finger. If you tell me where the plasters are, we'll go and get them. No, it's OK, honey, I don't need one. Um, and what did you want to be? When you were kind of, when you were, I don't know, four, five, six, what did you hope for? I wanted to work in a shoe shop at one point. I wanted to work as a cashier because I thought it would be funny to work, cool to run the till. Um, I think I wanted to be a vet at some point. I wanted to be an RAF pilot until mum said that you couldn't be an RAF in the RAF when you were a girl. <laughs> um, all sorts of silly little things like that, I think. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sylvia. That's why you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. That's why you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. That's why you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. I guess I'm currently doing what they did. 30 years ago and uh, designing my city of Milton Keynes. Um, predominantly commercial, of course. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a button to actually build any culture to set up your little own sub-community of, uh, of poets. <laughs> Can't see any drinking holes yet. Um, I think a few more areas of, of green land, so the promotional video will look nice. And, um, and yes, swarms of people are moving in. Look at this. Unfortunately, this game doesn't actually tell you how the people are feeling. Um, you're, you're, you're meant to have one shop per quadrant, one park per quadrant, uh, one leisure facility per quadrant, one police station for every ten quadrants. So whoever wrote the instruction booklet for SimCity was the same person who wrote the instruction booklet for Milton Keynes. Um, <laughs> But um, Milton Keynes awakened. When I first come off series, when I first come to Milton Keynes for like two months and didn't see one black person, I was like, I want to go back to London. I was telling my mum, look, man, yeah, I can't come to this place here and be the only black person in the whole bloody town. You know what I mean? Like, that's how I was feeling like it, but. Uh, obviously, time moved on, I like, met more people, and you know what I mean? It's starting to get lively now. There ain't no broken dream, man. There ain't no dream. <laughs> there ain't no dream at all. <laughs> We're in darkness, man. Fake darkness, man. It's a tiny little light, you can see where you're never gonna make it. It's too far. Isn't it? Too far. And when you do get to the light, the light's a little small light. It's a little small Nah, you ain't like going said, nowhere. No one, everyone who lives around there, they ain't going nowhere, man. Nowhere. It's like a prison, you're locked in, you ain't going nowhere. And when you do make a killing, money and that, you soon be gone. I made a killing, you know, my money's gone, I've got to build that back up again, man. But still, you know, the police yeah. is hard in the case and that, hard you know, case. but we, <laughs> that's the only way we can make money, innit? Yeah. I don't go out robbing and that, but that's not my sort of thing, you know, I don't do that. I don't sell class A's, innit, but I do make money.
but only 15 minutes away exists this kind of wealth with the longest private swimming pool in Europe. And underpass rhymes with underclass. You can seriously yeah, hand me a million pound right now and be like, all right, there's a million pound here. Yeah? I want to see you blow this a million pound in Milton Keynes yeah, in two weeks. I'll sit there for two weeks and not know what the hell to do. This place is, I can't understand, innit? you have to live here to know what I'm talking about, man. There's nothing here. I can sit here yeah, and I can walk for half an hour, yeah? And the only good thing I'll come to is the underpasses in different estates. That's it. No source of entertainment, nothing. There's nothing in this place. No, I, I can't even see how they call this place a city or a town or whatever you want to call it, boy. This place is just like a dead stop place, man. It's like made for old people, but it ain't made for old people, you know what I mean? It's crazy, man. Was it other tea for Trickstar? It's a shame we don't like you because you're a rat. I, I didn't write that hand there anyway. That's my mate's sister. Like, she liked me and I didn't get with her, like, because of certain reasons. And she got upset. That was her ex-boyfriend, Alidi. Alidi's butters fucking the next girl. He never do, but... <laughs> the truth is something that can be deciphered from various texts, but you're more likely to find it written on a wall than written in a paper. In my little life and in my little, you know, area, uh, every time I've tried to go through the system to get something changed, it's never happened, even at school. Uh, you know, you're, if you're in a fringe uh, minority, then you are, your view is outcasted and you're not taken seriously. sort of follow politics at all? As little as I possibly can because they're all crooks at the end of the day and they're all as bad as each other. It's trying to pick the lesser of all the evils and when whoever you elect are just as bad as last people. I mean like Conservative was like the main government throughout my whole life. Obviously they were in power from what well, when I was born up until 1990, whenever that election was, I think it was 94, was it, or 97? 97. Was it 97? Then it was Labour that took over, and there's no difference at all. But did you feel in 97 that there was this new spirit of optimism that, you know... I was a kid then, it didn't really bother me. Yeah, are you 17? Yeah, I was still a kid, I was still a minor. I was more, at 17 years old, like moving out home at 15, the last thing that I wanted to think about was the government. Our apathy is convenient. They're shafting us day and night. Indoor ski slope, stupid gyms, the longest shopping mall in Europe, serious discussions about cool ringtones, pop bands, the premiership, it's all distraction. There's no real jobs, no more social housing. Meantime, there's an invoice for our education and they call us lazy. Look at the houses people are living in. And the council say they care about the people, like they try to take care of the communities. Look at the houses. All right. <laughs> how do they know how you feel? How the council know how we feel? By the graffiti, by the crimes, by the um, government and council people getting abused, by the um, people burning down their houses to get fucking, to get new houses and things like that. People going to dramatic lengths and that to get new houses and that. The council know how the people feel. They heard it, they know, they know. They ain't gonna do nothing about it though. Cause they can't do nothing about it themselves. Really and truthfully, the council can't do nothing, get me? Cause they don't, they don't call the shots, do they? We don't acknowledge them. Look at, we're walking through Nairfield, you see all that rubbish on the floor. They don't, they don't respect us. How can we respect the council if they don't respect us? How can we respect the police if they don't respect us? Like, how can we respect the government if they don't respect us? How can we respect the law if the law don't respect us? As I was saying, like, police officer could come up to you and say, fuck off, like, get out of this area, like, and get rude to you. Like, why are you going to respect the police officer after that? It's not as if Milton Keynes has been destroyed from what it once was and turned into this. Uh, you haven't got a case where we've lost something to have come up with this. My parents choose to, chose to move here. Um, and now, as I'm growing up, I'm thinking about leaving here. I don't think it's tragic in what's happened. It's just a situation that it would never have been any other way because it's just been designed from the start to be this centre of commerce. 
And it's just a shame that the whole society is so shallow. You haven't got anything here which will people associate, oh, Milton Keynes, oh, that's the place where that happens. Milton Keynes is the place where absolutely nothing happens, in my opinion. If you thought the past half hour has been a rant against Milton Keynes, then I've failed. I love MK, because at least the people here are beginning to understand. Sure, we live in a desert, but get up out of your chair and look in your high street. What's that neon flicker at the edge of your vision? A cloud? A chain store? A theme pub? Some Muzak? It's the future coming to a high street near you. cities were like Milton Keynes. The balloons, yeah? That's, that's the kids' dreams. That's the balloon and they're letting go of it. It's gone.